Picture this, a dimly lit movie theater in 1959, the scent of buttery popcorn wafting through the air as the curtains slowly draw back, revealing the silver screen. The audience settles into their plush seats, anticipation hanging thick in the room. And then, it begins, Some Like It Hot, a film that would go on to etch itself into the annals of cinematic history. For many, that first encounter with this comedic masterpiece was a revelation. The film's intoxicating blend of humor, romance, and sheer audacity was like nothing they had ever seen before. Marilyn Monroe's dazzling presence, Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis donning drag to evade the mob, and the uproarious escapades that followed, it was a spectacle that left indelible memories etched in the minds of all who witnessed it. Perhaps it was Sugar Cane's sultry rendition of I Want to Be Loved by You or the hilarity that ensued as Jerry and Joe navigated the treacherous waters of femininity, all while trying to keep their true identities hidden. Whatever it was, Some Like It Hot had a way of searing itself into the collective memory of its audience, leaving them with a grin that lingered long after the credits rolled. Now, let's peel back the curtain and uncover some fascinating, lesser-known tidbits about this iconic film. From the off-screen antics of the cast to the unexpected challenges faced during production, the story behind the making of Some Like It Hot is as captivating as the film itself. So, grab your popcorn and settle in as we journey behind the scenes of this cinematic gem. In 1959, the silver screen witnessed the creation of a classic comedy, Some Like It Hot. While the film is celebrated for its humor and iconic performances, it harbors intriguing behind-the-scenes stories. One such tale involves Anthony Perkins, who famously auditioned for the role eventually played by Jack Lemmon. Perkins, known for his later role as Norman Bates in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, was in the running for the part of Jerry, Daphne, the saxophone player who finds himself in a whirlwind of chaos alongside Tony Curtis and Marilyn Monroe. However, fate had other plans, and Jack Lemmon ultimately claimed the role, leaving an indelible mark on cinema history. But the drama wasn't limited to auditions. According to Lemmon himself, the film's production included some unexpected tango lessons. George Raft, a legendary Hollywood gangster film actor, took it upon himself to teach Lemon and co-star Joey Brown how to tango for a pivotal scene in the movie. Raft's involvement added an authentic touch to the film's iconic tango scene, showcasing the lengths to which the cast went to make Some Like It Hot a cinematic masterpiece. Director Billy Wilder, a maestro of comedy, had his share of challenges during the production. He famously referred to Marilyn Monroe, the film's leading lady, by saying, We were in mid-flight, and there was a nut on the plane. Monroe's well-documented insecurities led to frequent disruptions on set, causing considerable stress for Wilder. Legend has it that the director resorted to suppository sedatives to find some respite in sleep. Wilder didn't mince words in his frustration with Monroe, publicly criticizing her behavior. She even found herself uninvited to the film's rap party. However, in time, Wilder's perspective softened, and he would later praise Monroe's performance, recognizing the talent that lay beneath the turmoil. Some Like It Hot remains an enduring classic, known for its wit, humor, and the captivating performances of its cast. Behind the laughter and glamour, these intriguing anecdotes reveal the challenges and dedication that went into creating this cinematic gem. In 1959, the silver screen was set ablaze with Billy Wilder's classic comedy, Some Like It Hot. While the film has left an indelible mark in cinematic history, its production was not without its share of drama. Stories of the difficulties encountered by the cast and crew, particularly with Marilyn Monroe, have reached near-legendary status. During the filming, Monroe's behavior became a subject of intrigue. In a now-famous farewell telephone conversation between Monroe and Tony Curtis, keen-eyed viewers noted her unusual eye movements, which suggested she was reading her lines directly from an off-screen blackboard. According to Curtis, Monroe's punctuality was equally baffling, often arriving two to three hours late to the set, and on occasion, she refused to leave her dressing room, causing production delays and frustrations. Yet, despite the on-set challenges, Some Like It Hot emerged as a cinematic gem. The sequences set in Florida, where the film's characters seek refuge from the mob, were shot on location at the Hotel Del Coronado Resort near San Diego, California. Production began on June 1, 1958, which coincided with Monroe's 32nd birthday. However, the shoot proved to be anything but smooth sailing. The film ended up wrapping on November 5, 1958, more than two months over schedule and costing over half a million dollars beyond the initial budget. Furthermore, the film weaves elements of real-life gangster lore into its plot. The character of Spatz Colombo, portrayed by George Raft, bears a striking resemblance to the notorious Chicago gangster Al Capone. Capone, infamous for orchestrating the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929, employed a similar method of eliminating rival gang members. This gruesome incident, which occurred in a Chicago garage on Clark Street, finds its mention in the film, drawing eerie parallels to the actual events. Some Like It Hot may have had its share of behind-the-scenes drama, but it ultimately delivered a comedic masterpiece that endures as one of Hollywood's finest. With Marilyn Monroe's enigmatic on-set antics, a ballooning budget, and nods to the criminal underworld, this film continues to captivate audiences, reminding us that even in chaos, greatness can emerge on the silver screen. 
In 1959, amidst the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, a film emerged that would etch itself into the annals of cinematic history, Some Like It Hot. While this classic comedy is celebrated for its humor and iconic performances, it harbors a secret story, tucked away behind the scenes, that adds depth to its legacy. Marilyn Monroe, the epitome of Hollywood allure, was a central figure in the film's cast. What few knew at the time was that she was pregnant during the filming, a personal struggle that would significantly impact her appearance. Monroe, who had faced several miscarriages in her turbulent life, grappled with the physical toll of pregnancy. To ensure the continuity of the film's promotional materials and stills, both Sandra Warner, an uncredited band member, and Monroe's stand-in, Evelyn Moriarty, stepped in for photography sessions. Monroe's ethereal visage was later superimposed onto these images, concealing the reality of her condition from the public eye. Years after the film's release, a curious question emerged from a discerning movie reviewer. Why did Tony Curtis' portrayal of Josephine exude more traditional femininity compared to Jack Lemmon's uninhibited Daphne? Curtis, as it turns out, had grappled with inner trepidation about playing a woman, or rather, a man posing as one. This anxiety manifested in his performance through tightly wound body language that inadvertently conveyed demure and shy traits, which society often associates with femininity. In contrast, Jack Lemmon, who was unabashedly unbothered by the role, embraced it with such exuberance that he often ran out of his dressing room screaming like the Queen of the May, bringing forth a more masculine body language, even in his guise as Daphne. Some Like It Hot remains a cinematic gem, not only for its uproarious humor and masterful direction but also for the hidden stories that unfolded off-screen. It's a testament to the enduring allure of Hollywood, where even beneath the glittering facade, the human experience often hides, waiting to be discovered. In the 1959 classic film Some Like It Hot, directed by the legendary Billy Wilder, a subtle yet audacious mockery was embedded in a scene that left an indelible mark on Hollywood history. According to Jules Pfeiffer and the Bronfmans, this cinematic gem took a daring jab at the formidable Music Corporation of America, a powerhouse in the entertainment industry during that era. In a scene brimming with comedic brilliance, musicians played by Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon, two down-on-their-luck musicians in search of employment, barge into an office boldly labeled Music Corporation of America. To their astonishment, the sole occupant of this imposing domain is none other than a woman nonchalantly seated at her desk, indulging in a sip from a discreet bottle. This sly, tongue-in-cheek moment was a veiled critique of the influential MCA, a company that seldom saw humor directed its way. This audacious move to lampoon the MCA speaks volumes about Billy Wilder's irreverent wit and fearlessness as a filmmaker, a characteristic that would become emblematic of Some Like It Hot itself. The film was a triumph in its own right, blending comedy, romance, and social commentary in a way that charmed audiences and critics alike. But behind the scenes, a fascinating tidbit adds another layer of intrigue to this cinematic gem. In 1957, the iconic Marilyn Monroe, who played the unforgettable sugar cane in the film, penned a letter to Billy Wilder expressing her fervent desire to collaborate once more after their success with the seven-year itch in 1955. Monroe's hope for a reunion with Wilder ultimately materialized in Some Like It Hot, solidifying their cinematic legacy and creating moments that are still celebrated today. Moreover, according to David Thompson in his book Have You Seen?, another captivating facet emerges. Actress Mitzi Gaynor was on standby, poised to step into the role of Sugar Kane if Marilyn Monroe had encountered any unforeseen setbacks. This understudy dynamic adds a layer of intrigue to the film's production, showcasing the dedication and flexibility of the cast. In retrospect, Some Like It Hot is more than just a classic comedy. It's a movie that dared to challenge industry giants, fulfilled the dreams of its iconic star, and had a contingency plan in place to ensure its success. In the realm of cinema, it remains a testament to the audacity and ingenuity of its creators. As we draw the curtains on this cinematic journey, let's pause for a moment of reflection. The year was 1959, and the silver screen bestowed upon us a gem, a timeless masterpiece, Some Like It Hot a film that has gracefully danced through the corridors of time, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of cinephiles across generations. In the midst of the black and white frames, the enigmatic allure of Marilyn Monroe, the quick wit of Jack Lemmon, and the comic brilliance of Tony Curtis converged to create a symphony of laughter and love. It was a tale of deception, a riotous escapade, and a celebration of the human spirit's capacity to adapt and persevere. Perhaps, as you've journeyed through this classic, you've found yourself captivated by the irresistible charm of Sugar Cane, laughing at the hilarious antics of Joe and Jerry, or marveling at the sheer genius of director Billy Wilder. Maybe it's the iconic final line, nobody's perfect, that's etched into your memory, reminding us all of the imperfections that make us beautifully human. Now, dear reader, viewer, we invite you to share your thoughts, memories, and personal connection with Some Like It Hot. Was it a film that made you laugh uncontrollably on a rainy Sunday afternoon? Did it introduce you to the magic of classic cinema? Or perhaps it's a movie that you've passed down through generations, a shared family treasure. In the comments below, let your voice resonate and your thoughts flow freely. Celebrate this timeless piece of art with fellow enthusiasts and kindred spirits who appreciate the magic of Marilyn, the genius of Wilder, and the allure of a story that transcends time. 
Thank you for joining us on this delightful cinematic sojourn and for sharing your love for Some Like It Hot. Your unique perspective enriches the tapestry of our collective cinematic experience. With warm regards, the Cinema Enthusiast Team.